rainbow ants are an ecologically dominant and important group of ants, most species that belong to the genus Iridomyrmex are native to Australia. Sometimes they are considered pests for disturbing soil and entering homes. A really interesting fact is that in rural Australia, farmers are known to place animal carcasses on meat ant mounds as a method of disposing of them. Meat ants can consume the carcass and reduce it to bones in a matter of weeks. They live in a wide variety of habitats and a single colony can contain up to 300,000 individuals. Sometimes they dwell in several nest sites connected by special paths which can reach lengths up to 650 meters. Some species have a unique symbiotic relationship with caterpillars and butterflies. This special association is called myrmecophily. The meat ants consume their special secretion called honeydew and in return defend the caterpillars from potential predators. I have a full video dedicated to this amazing phenomenon and I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out. They are diurnal foragers and are mainly active throughout the day. Besides honeydew, they also feed on small insects and nectar. Workers are particularly attracted to seeds with eliosomes. These fleshy structures are attached to the seeds of many plant species and contain lipids and protein which the ants feed to their larvae. Their life cycle has four stages and they go through a development called complete metamorphosis. They begin their life as an egg, then an egg hatches into a worm-shaped larva without eyes or legs. Larvae rely on a constant supply of food by adults and they grow very rapidly and molt multiple times during this stage. When a larva is large enough, it eventually metamorphoses into a pupa. This is a stage of rest and reorganization. Pupae look more like adults, but their legs and antennae are still folded against their bodies. They start out whitish and gradually become darker. After about 6 to 8 weeks, pupae finally emerge as adults. Young adults tend to be lighter in color, but darken as they age. The footage that you have been watching was captured with my Laoba 25mm ultra macro lens at 4.5x magnification and the subsequent images were taken with both this ultra macro lens and also with the Laoba 90mm at 2 to 1 magnification ratio. By the way, if you've been enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Let's have a look at some pictures now. In the first two extreme close-ups, you can see a specimen that was just leaving one of the nest entrances that is located on the brick wall in our backyard. That blue-green iridescent sheen, which is quite visible, especially on its abdomen, is the reason why they are called rainbow ants. This next image is of another individual from a different angle. I still manage to focus on its compound eye on that rather large head of this worker. In the following photo, which was taken only at 2x magnification, one of the workers seemed to be carrying some sort of sticky organic material that most likely was high in sugar content. In the fifth image of this series, which I captured a few days later, one of the colony members was transporting what looked like the desiccated body of a scale insect perhaps. It was standing right at the entrance hole. The next couple of shots demonstrate how powerful those mandibles are. Some ants can lift and carry up to 50 times their own body weight, which is extremely impressive. This worker wasn't even struggling dragging this piece of soil around that would have weighed substantially more than its own body as well. I'm really excited to show you the last several macros in which you can see workers carrying larvae of different sizes to and from the nest. Please let me know in the comments below which image you like the most.
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this educational macro episode and feel free to check out these videos next.